National Agricultural Advisory Services, NADS, was formed in 2001 by an Act of Parliament to, among other things, promote market-oriented agriculture and give advisory services to the farmers. From its inception, many farmers have benefited from it, but also NADS has been mad with all kinds of controversies. In fact, the President recently registered his disappointment in NADS. What went wrong with NADS? Can it be salvaged? Those are some of the things that we talk about on the show today. So welcome to our parliament. I'm your host, Iguma Gabriel. Our guests today, we have Morrison Rakakamba, the CEO of Agency for Transformation, but he's also a farmer keen on agricultural and environmental policy. Honorable Christine Bako Abia, the Arua Woman MP, but also the former Shadow Minister for Agriculture. Patience Ramigisa, a senior entomologist from the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fishery. He's here to represent the minister who wasn't able to come for the show today. The studio audience and you watching at home, this is our parliament and the debate begins now. Ministry of Agriculture, what is the current status of NADS? Um, the program has been was successful in some areas, but also have registered remarkable uh, um, challenges. Mm. And uh, the whole idea about the current status is because of the challenges that have been experienced. The, the Minister of Agriculture has been studying over a period of time mm. and trying to understand because in, in, in any country you must keep making changes. Otherwise, you know, changes are always part and parcel in, in, in a development process. But um, the tenets or the key tenets are, uh, of, 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 under which the NADS was established, there were a number of assumptions you know, that were made. You know, the principle was demand-driven. And demand-driven meant that the farmer had the capacity to demand, to own, to pay, and control the service. Now, that was a very serious assumption. And two, it also assumed that there was a critical mass of private service providers in the, on the market that could be procured by the farmer, farming community. So, uh, the, 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 and, and, and three, it also assumed that the public extension staff would be laid off to go and provide services in the private sector. Those were very fundamental assumptions that were made at the beginning of the program that actually affected the outcome. Because now, uh, having said that, of course, all the, I, I, I cannot enumerate all the challenges. All of you know what the challenges are. Mm. But the Minister of Agriculture has been working on a reform. And uh, uh, you have, uh, it's now public. People, everybody knows that there is a a reform that the Minister of Agriculture uh, uh, has, has proposed, although it is not yet ratified by Cabinet. Okay. Yes, we know about that reform. But there's been a rumor that NADS has been suspended. So does NADS exist? Has it been suspended? Or is there a part of NADS that has been suspended? No, no, no. It's not suspended. Mm. What's happening? I think it is After a process. After the pronouncements by the president that NADS had not done what he wanted and so it needed to be reviewed, what exactly has happened? You know, the issue is that the, in government, it is a process of transformation. Uh, what the Minister of Agriculture is, has, is proposing a, a reform, but the reform has to be in transition. It is not that the program has all of a sudden be, is all of a sudden being closed. No. The program has the legal agreements we have with development partners on, 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 to fulfill. So we, what, what we have done is ours is more of a long-term thinking. 
how to transform and transit from the current state to the new state we would wish to see the, uh, the, the, the Ministry of Agriculture moving okay. to. Before I move away from you, uh, just one more question. Under what ministry does NADS fall? It is Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. So do the, does NADS account to the Ministry of Agriculture? Yes. The, in principle, you know, that is the misconception that the public has been having, that, uh, in, that, that NADS is an independent entity and doesn't belong to the Ministry of Agriculture. But it is like the Ministry of Agriculture has eight agencies, Uganda Coastal Development Authority, Cotton Development Authority, National Culture Research Organization, NADS, so it is only that, you know, because of the shortcomings I've told you that have, have, uh, the institutional design issues of NADS that has made it become, and because of the importance of extension, because extension is the heart and soul of the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm. So it is it, it, because of that it, and its, its importance, it has become so prominent. We'll find out from uh, the farmers who are present here today if NADS has actually become prominent uh, for good things. Let's bring in the Member of Parliament, Honorable Abia. You're the ones who created the law, and you're the ones who hold some of these government agencies to account. From Parliament's side, how has NADS done? First of all, I want to uh, inform the public that by the time uh, the NADS Act came into effect, I was not yet a Member of Parliament. Uh, but I was already a student of agriculture and that the lecturer was 2001. at that. Mm. Yes, and that said, first of all, this country needs to answer the question, what went wrong with the initial uh, system of agricultural extension provision before NADS came in? Until now, government of Uganda has not explained to citizens as to what actually transpired. Secondly, this agricultural advisory services is ideally supposed to be private sector-led, demand-driven. Now, we are asking as a country, how many Ugandan farmers, peasant, commercial, uh, medium-scale farmers, are able to demand for advisory services? Let's technically look at uh, the, the infrastructure of agriculture in terms of the human resource and the hardware. Now, what do I mean? Look at the, the, the traits of agriculture we have. These are rain-fed, small-scale, basically peasant-driven. And um, look at the, the human resource infrastructure we're talking about, the software. You are talking about one agricultural extension uh, service provider to 5,000 farmers. You are looking at a sub-county of around 30,000 people with only two agricultural extension service providers. You are looking at a farmer whose per capita income is 300,000 shillings, and this farmer is supposed to be in position to demand for agricultural extension services at a fee. Then the question is, is this something that can be realized? Mm. I was privileged to be among the first people to do the midterm evaluation of NATS. I was in the West Nile region in some parts of uh, eastern Uganda. And what year was this? This was about uh, 2005, six there. 2005, in fact. And then the question then was, what we found out from uh, the farmers was that there are instances where certain enterprises were very successful. And there were cases where some uh, uh, enterprises were uh, uh, totally a failure. Remember, the principle is that farmers are going to form groups. Within those groups, they should have one identifiable common interest. And this common interest is supposed to lead them into uh, 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 commercial agriculture. Because now, the aim is we are moving from the basic peasant agriculture mm. to commerce-driven agriculture, yes, and therefore, oriented. we yeah. shall commercialize. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the land size the farmer has, the inputs that the farmer needs, the, the, the infrastructure, the market infrastructure, all these are in a wanting state. Then you craft this thing somewhere and you see we have a provision from the World Bank to run agricultural extension in this country for 25 years this way. 
the first midterm evaluation results are saying, Honorable please, Bia, I hear this you. is not going to work, yes. especially for the peasant farmer. Why? The peasant farmer's uh, 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 traits of doing uh, agriculture are in such a way that he or she will never approach anybody for advisory services. And it would only work best, especially and particularly for the uh, animal husbandry. Because when the goats are dying, they will rush for extension. If the cows are dying, they will ask what is the question here and there. That is possible. But when maize uh, uh, is rotting, yeah, you have uh, cassava mosaic. Chances are that this farmer is just going to say, I'll remove this crop and redo that. Uh, that field for another crop. So you look at the traits of the farmer, you look at the infrastructure provided by the government to do agriculture in the country, and then you ask, is this service provision definitely going to move this farmer from where he is? Because remember, all our farmers, most of them are having land races. What do I mean by land races? These are the traditional seed systems where I save some millet of the other year to do this and then now. Do we have available technologies that these farmers could take up? You want to radically commercialize without fixing this kind of infrastructure. What do you see? You see very minimal change. But when you want to change, you then take, you input politics. You say, okay, how do I work? How many farmer groups are in this sub-county? Who are the farmer for a chairpersons? Can these ones be agents of politics? And the moment you begin playing politics into this farming system, yes. what does the rest of, 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 of the population do? So, okay, let's watch them. In the meantime, when you are to access that kind of service provision, there comes a time when you say, okay, is Christian blue, yellow, red, what? Mm -hmm. That now plays the critical part in institutionalizing a failure into the system. And that's precisely why every now and then you see guidelines are changing from A to B. Before even the district coordinators appreciate the new guidelines, another guideline has come.